Key news, the Labor Department has just released new jobless numbers. CNN Chief Business Correspondent Christine Romans has the breaking numbers for us. What do they say, Christine? Another one and a half million people, almost one and a half million people filed for the first time for jobless benefits in the most recent week. These numbers have been coming down little by little over the past 12 weeks or so, but they're coming down from just an unbelievably high level. Uh, to have one and a half million people still filing for unemployment benefits in a week is just something almost unheard of in the American labor market. The biggest increases were in Oklahoma, in Texas, in New York, and in New Jersey. The continuing claims, those are people who are continuing to get benefits at least two weeks in a row now. That is about 19 and a half million. That came down by some 767,000 from the prior week. I want to still watch that number and see that number start to come down. Again, the trend is in the right direction, but just the sheer volume of these numbers show you that we are at the bottom of a very deep hole in the labor market and trying to cl climb out. Even as the economy has slowly been reopening, you're seeing these layoffs continue. Uh, Chuck E. Cheese filing for bankruptcy this week, GNC as well, 24-hour fitness. You've got a lot of retailers that are still laying people off. So uh, the layoffs continue even, even as the economy reopens, guys. All right, Christine Romans, thank you very much for that. Obviously, these numbers are super important. So many of the arrows in the fight against coronavirus pointing in the wrong direction. Uh, over the course of this week, the three most populous states in the country reporting a record number of new cases. And one of the things you can see by looking around the world at some other countries, it didn't have to be that way. John Avalon with a reality check. America first isn't supposed to be about pandemic deaths, but that's where we are. First in deaths worldwide, first in cases. In fact, twice as many as the next highest case count in Brazil. Not only was it the Trump administration prepared for COVID-19, as Dr. Sanjay Gupta pointed out in his recent podcast, we're not even done with the first wave. The first wave isn't even over. And some states that resisted lockdown or opened up too quickly are seeing new spikes. The lesson seems clear. Speedy and stringent actions directed by scientists save lives and ultimately do more to get the country on the road to economic recovery. But politicians pushing back against science only prolongs the pain. Take a look at this. Here's us with the number of confirmed cases and deaths courtesy of Johns Hopkins. See that rapid growth beginning in March and then a slight decline? But then another spike in summer when many folks expected the virus to retreat for a time. Now here's Italy the first European country to suffer massive losses after the virus started in China. You see a terrible spike and then a dramatic decline after the first national lockdown and minimal levels today. South Korea suffered its first cases of COVID-19 at roughly the same time as the United States, but it took quick action with testing, contact tracing, and mask wearing and kept the total number of cases to just over 12 and a half thousand and 281 deaths. Now, we should point out that other countries like Brazil and India, with notably nationalist leaders, are also seeing massive spikes. But let's get back to the USA. The Northeast saw the worst of COVID-19 in the early months, particularly New York. But thanks to early and aggressive efforts to lock down and test, the numbers of new cases have declined dramatically there. Now compare that to Florida, Texas, and Arizona, where governors resisted calls to lock down, bowing to President Trump's admonition to get the economy moving again. Well, they're each seeing spikes, along with California. Now, in May, the National Review touted the success of Florida's resistance to state lockdowns, going so far as to ask where the governor should go for his apology. Now his state is seeing more than 3,000 new cases a day, making it a potential national epicenter. And the state's former data scientist revealed on New Day that Florida may be undercounting its deaths by not counting non-Florida residents who die in state. Look, pandemics don't care about partisan politics, but that's been at the core of our country's mistakes in confronting this crisis. President Trump didn't want to deal with reality out of fear it would hurt the economy and his 2020 chances. The virus spread and the economy was devastated anyway. We screwed up testing and gave mixed messages on masks, while President Trump encouraged states to open up too early against the advice of scientists. And as things are getting worse, the president is still in denial. If we stop testing right now, we'd have very few cases, if any. Which is a little like saying PSA tests cause prostate cancer. Here's what's clear. What Dr. Anthony Fauci called America's anti-science bias has hurt us all. And denial is not a strategy. And that's your reality check.
Our thanks to John for that. 